Today we're looking at the Civil War 1861. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, I'd love to see your answer to question number five in the comments below. So today we're really just doing a quick summary of what happened in 1861 during the Civil War. And really what we're focusing on is after that first shot at Fort Sumner in April of 1861. And then, of course, a couple months later in July, we have the first major land battle there at the first Battle of Bull Run. And really, Bull Run had opened the eyes of both the Union and the Confederacy that this this war was going to be longer and much more bloody than anyone had anticipated. And so both sides really during 1861 are really focusing on getting volunteers, getting volunteers trained to fight. And so by the end of 1861, there's actually nearly a million soldiers on both the you know Union and Confederacy who are armed and ready to fight. So really 1862 is when really some of the major fighting begins to happen. But in 1861, as this whole recruiting effort was ramping up, uh, Abraham Lincoln was looking to his military leadership for a plan of how they were going to get the Confederacy to come back into the Union. And so Lincoln turned to General Winfield Scott, and he was, you know, 75 years old by this time. He was too overweight and fat to be able to even get on a horse to lead troops. But Scott had been a hero during the Mexican-American War, and of course was instrumental in the capture of Mexico City during the Mexican-American War. But Scott developed what came to be known as the Anaconda Plan, because um, as, you, as you see in this picture here, this plan basically involved squeezing the Confederacy into submission and bringing them to their knees and forcing them to come back into the Union. All right, so there's really three parts to this Anaconda plan. First, the Union was going to put up a naval blockade of all southern ports, and the Union was able to establish this relatively unopposed, because you got, got to think about the Confederacy really didn't have much of a navy uh, to speak of, and so they were able to block all of these southern ports. Second, the Union would take control of the Mississippi River, and this was a much more daunting task that would take a few years to accomplish, and most of the fighting that takes place in the Western theater of the war focuses on this objective. Lastly, the Union planned to capture Richmond, Virginia, the Confederate capital, um, which was barely 100 miles away from Washington, D.C., and this, too, required a lot of fighting, a lot of bloodshed, and honestly wouldn't be accomplished until really the very end of the war. But take note that none of their goals here was the elimination of slavery. All right, the whole point was to just simply keep the Union together. The elimination of slavery as being a goal or objective is going to come later on uh, in the war. For the Confederacy, on the other hand, their basic plan was just simply fight a defensive war, try to maintain their proclaimed independence was their idea. And honestly, what their, uh, their whole idea was, was kind of follow the pattern that Americans had fought in the American Revolution. By just simply, you know, the American Revolution, Americans just simply outlasted the British and kept on fight, living to fight another day. And that was basically what the Confederates' plan was, was just simply outlast the Union. They couldn't match up with their industry or anything like that, so they were just going to outlast the Union. But again, you know, the, the Confederacy does go on the offensive a few times in 1862 and 63 to try to bring the war to a, a quicker conclusion. Now, although much of 1861 on each side was just spent simply organizing, there was some significant fighting that took place. When in Western Virginia, Union forces were able to win victories at battles such as the Battle of Carnifex Ferry and Cheap Mountain uh, that helped them to secure West Virginia for the Union and eventually led to West Virginia breaking away from the state of Virginia. Um, in Missouri, there was a lot of fighting that took place as well. In fact, Missouri is the th the state with the third most battles that takes place during the Civil War behind Virginia and Tennessee. So with Missouri being a crucial border state, and of course with the, the state being split between uh, Confederate supporters and Union supporters, there's a lot of fighting that takes place there. And actually, the, the culmination of that fighting in Missouri took place in uh, August of 1861 at the Battle of Wilson's Creek near Springfield, Missouri. Um, this was the first major battle west of the Mississippi River. There was a total of 5,400 Union troops versus about 11,000 Confederate troops fought on August 10th of 1861. The battle ended with a Confederate victory with over 2,000 casualties, and among the dead was General Nathaniel Lyon, who was the first general to be killed in battle during during the Civil War. So for a brief time, this victory gave Confederates control of Southern uh, Missouri. Some other things to note during this time period, too, are some people who are beginning to rise, uh, I guess, in their prominence. One would be Ulysses S. Grant, who at the time the Civil War began was working in his uh, father-in-law's leather shop in Galena, Illinois. He joins up with the 21st Illinois Volunteers as a colonel, but he quickly is promoted to a brigadier general in late summer of 1861, and of course we'll hear more from him in 1862. Also, another person I need to mention here, lastly, to note is this Union General, uh, 
General George B. McClellan. Uh, after the loss at Bull Run, he, of course, was put in, in command of the Union troops, and by November of 1861, he was made the General-in-Chief of the Union Army, replacing Winfield Scott. And so around Washington, D.C., he had amassed an army of nearly 150,000 troops, and he was busy training and organizing them, and in 1862, we're going to see that huge army go into action. So, hopefully you learned something there about 1861, and thanks for watching.